Hello everybody and this is part 5 of our Tamiya 124 scale uh, Corolla build. Uh, in this video we'll be assembling the interior, a lot of the parts we prepared in an earlier video. Uh, but just before putting the thing together we're just going to build the seats up and uh, they've been primed as you can see and at the moment they've just been drilled out at the size to accept the lap belts just using a small uh, drill bit and finishing off with a very sharp uh, number 11 blade just to uh, square that hole up. I think the belts look better if they do actually move through the, the seat itself. So having been primed the seats are now uh, just sprayed in Tamiya. This is a semi-gloss black. Uh, the new lacquer paints from Tamiya do give a really nice finish. And then we're using some uh, Gunsanyo uh, Clear, just to put some gloss on there ready for the Kevlar decals that uh, fit on the back of the seat there. So a couple of coats of that, just get rid of any bits of dust before the final top coat of gloss. Just build up a nice steady few layers of uh, gloss till we get that sort of result. That's been hardened off for a couple of days before this stage, which is the decals. We actually had a, an old sheet of uh, scale motorsport templates just for the Corolla, but the actual decals were so old that they'd cracked up, so we had to replace them with a new sheet of Kevlar. Uh, just a simple case of transferring the templates across, cutting them out and using them to cut out the uh, the good decal. Plenty of my set to start off with on the back of the seat. And then get the decal that's been soaking in the water. Just get it to move around a little bit on the backing ready to transfer onto the seat itself and then just smooth it round just to try and get it to initially conform to the shape. This is quite a difficult uh, shape to get the decal to uh, conform to but uh, plenty of applications of Microsat and Microsol do the trick and it's just a case really of being very gentle with this stuff, it's very thin, which is why you can eventually get it to conform to these very unusual shapes. Very patient use of uh, a brush until we gradually get the decal to lay down. The actual shape from the template wasn't that brilliant actually on this one. It, uh, overlapped in certain places but that was easy to touch up with some black later on. So just smoothing the decal out and using a cotton bud to just finally press some of the creases out. They didn't come out completely but this was subsequently coated in another coat of gloss uh, just to hide some of the wrinkles really. Um, but uh, when it was all finished off, they, they look fine. Some of the individual decals for the seats now, there are some Sparco insignias and some Toyota and driver's names to go on there as well. So that's just a straightforward case of applying the decals from the Tamiya sheet. Again, this was quite an old uh, set of decals so they did take some time to release from the from the backing sheet but uh, eventually they did and they eventually stuck pretty well despite their age. So again patient use of the Microsoft Microsol gets the decals to lay down uh, nicely. Just adjust them with a cocktail stick and Obviously try and match the positions of the decals across the two seats. They're going to be sitting next to each other so it'll be pretty apparent if the decals are in a different place on, on the two seats. 
So just reference to the one that you've already built. Onto the seat belts now, we're using a set of Edward pre painted seat belt. Uh, this is a six point harness. They also do a four point one, which can be made to uh, a six point as well with a bit of uh, jiggling around with it. These are very fiddly, really, but uh, just a, again a case of patience and gradual work through to get the to get the belts assembled. Just starting with the shoulder harness to start off with. The buckles are tiny, and the tool that I'm using there it's um, basically it's almost like a wax pencil that just is great for picking up these tiny little bits of uh, etched. Using a gel type super glue here just to uh, fold the belts back through the buckles and get them to stick down. That's all that's needed, just a quick dab and the belts come together. Having to thread through the lower part of the shoulder strap now, which is a bit more fiddly than uh, the rest of it, but again, just a bit of patience. And uh, these belts look a lot better than the decals that are supplied in the kit itself, which are very two dimensional and just basically stick smooth onto the, onto the seat. These tiny little buckles are probably, I don't know, probably a millimetre across. So they do take quite a bit of work to get them into place. Obviously some very fine tweezers are required. And again, just a dab of, tiny little dab of super glue gel. This gel type is uh, really good. It does take a little bit longer to grab, but it does give you a bit of time to position the part as well. So uh, there's a bit of a trade off there. So the holes that were drilled earlier on through the sides of the seat now accept the lap belts through them. And just a tiny dab again of super glue just to hold them down onto the seat pad. Just try and drape them in a fairly natural position. There's the other one going in which will overlap the first and just fold down the side. It's not really possible to see where these belts go once the seats are inside the car. So I wasn't too fussy about where the, where the ends of the belts were, were headed. This is quite a nerve-wracking part after work, doing all that work on the seats and using super glue on the backs. Um, it's very easy to get the glue on the back of the belt and then have it move around and smear across the newly painted seat. Um, it might be safer to use an acrylic glue like you can see just above uh, where we're working there but it's not quite as strong and these do need to be fixed firm, fairly firmly because they're going to be draped over the back of the roll bar uh, and attached much further back in the car. So they're going to take quite a bit of movement during assembly. So you need this pretty secure on the back of the seat. Just really carefully making sure that that doesn't move around before the glue sets up. And that's the end result. It's always a good idea to, when you've got two seats next to each other, to try and arrange the belts in slightly different position, just so that it looks more natural. Onto the dash now, and uh, starting off with a coat of semi-gloss black again. Only on the lower part of the dashboard, the top is a very dark grey shade, which we'll do, we'll come onto that later. While we've got the black in the airbrush, we'll do the steering column and steering wheel and the gear shift. For the dash itself, we're using some Scale Motorsport uh, carbon fiber. This is the Pewter Twill Weave carbon fiber decal. And again, I'm using the templates from the Scale Motorsport set. Just uh, 
cutting the templates out. This goes on the actual instrument panel, this first one. And then there's quite a complex one to go around the main console between the driver and uh, navigator. Microset again, absolutely essential for this decal. But the other thing to use that the uh, Scale Motorsport carbon decal responds really well to is some heat. Uh, either a hairdryer or I've got a, a heater in the modelling room that uh, you can just wave the decal in front of and it shrinks onto the moulded detail on the part. So just getting it loose from the backing sheet and some tweezers onto the, onto the part itself. Uh, another coat of microset just to initially get the decal to bed down and eventually here microsol to really soften the decal. Don't work with it too much after the microsol is on otherwise you'll just force the wrinkles down onto the, onto the detail and you won't get them out. Just let the microsol do its, do its job. This really did take quite a bit of work to get it down over all the raised uh, switches and dials on the centre console, but eventually got a reasonable result with that. And certainly after detail painting, uh, it came out pretty well as we can see in a, in a moment. So that's the carbon fibre done. Needs a bit of detail painting now, so just some uh, bits of red. These are all called out in the Tamir instructions, so they were followed to the letter. Some red, orange, and some aluminium, black, and so on for the switches and bits and pieces on the, on the centre console. Again, this is Tamir Lacquer, the new Tamir Lacquer range. Uh, which paints really well with a with a brush. It's quite thin and it does need more than one coat, especially a translucent colour like orange on black. But uh, it does go on really smoothly. It's really easy to use. So on with the rev counter. I actually split the rev counter. I had to fiddle around a long time with it to get it uh, to get it back into shape. Again, this is Tamiya Lacquer Aluminium for one, a few, one or two switches on the, on the centre console. Just touching them in with a very fine brush. These are Winsor & Newton Sable, Kalinske Sable brushes, yeah. which are quite expensive, but if they're looked after, will last an awful long time. And when I say look after the brushes, I mean um, don't get the paint right up to the ferrule, otherwise you won't be able to get them clean. You just see the paint's only going on the tip of the brush. Uh, and using them that way, making sure they're cleaned immediately afterwards uh, and stored properly. They'll, uh, they'll last a long time or worth the investment. So onto the steering column, I did contemplate gluing the actual column, then I changed my mind when I realised that I wasn't going to be able to do it. Uh, just to get the shift stick on there. Using uh, the acrylic glue in that particular case. And some Revel contactor for the steering wheel itself. Just make sure that the steering wheel is nice and straight. and onto the dash itself in a minute. Actually position the part first and then glue it on from, from the rear of the dashboard. There we go, just a dab at the back. That'll be quite enough to hold it in place. Again, just make sure it's level from both vertical and horizontal angles. And just let it set up in the in the stand. Just a final dab of 
aluminium for the top of the shifter there on the to the right of the steering wheel. I think I might have been a bit early with this. So you can see the paintbrush was actually wobbling the part around, but it did set up back into position after this. So that's the dashboard finish with some extra decals on it. And you can see that's the what I was just saying about looking after the brushes, put them back in the boxes in the tubes just to preserve them and that's the result we've got for the dashboard. So after all that we can now put all those components into the floor of the car starting off with the area above the uh, fuel tank just two locating points for that one very straightforward it's actually fairly visible through the back hatch of the of the car so all that uh, carbon kevlar weave decal was uh, was worth using on that particular part less so on this box which is fairly well hidden when everything's in place but the addition of the steel bracket does look nice on the, on that particular part. That's from the Scale Motorsports etch set. The rear roll frame, real part of the roll frame. Just a quick clean up before the part goes in. Once this is once these parts are in, it's not that easy to get them clean again so I do them I do them as the as they're going in just to make sure they're perfect before they actually hit the model. This isn't a structural part so just some acrylic glue on there. You see I taped up the underside of the uh, assembly just where the uh, brake discs will be in contact with the working surface and I've found in the past that if you don't protect them like that you can get the paint rubbing away from underneath with constant movement of the model. So there's the gear shift in and the handbrake fitted. Then I'm not sure what this part is. Again some sort of lever mechanism goes on the side of the tunnel there. Again using the acrylic glue to set that up. Try to be brave and fit that with my dumpy fingers but uh, thought better of it and used the tweezers to get uh, to get the part in position. This acrylic glue really does bond well once it's fully dry. It takes, I'd probably leave it a day or so before um, it's fully cured. And on these interiors, it's just as well to go through the instruction sheet and just mark off what you've, what you've fitted so you don't miss any of these levers or anything off because they're very difficult to get in once the assembly has progressed further. So just a quick check to make sure that you've, uh, you're have you working through the assembly methodically and uh, everything's going in where it should at the right time. Marking them, uh, marking them all off. So to those footwells that we did uh, in an earlier video, there's lots of uh, work on those, there's lots of masking and uh, painting, decaling and so on use of some uh, metal foil as well but uh, I think I think it was worth it for for the effect that we've uh, we've achieved with those so just a case of popping them onto the two locating points on the on the floor of the car just using gloves um, I don't like touching matte finishes with bare fingers, the grease on your hands um, 
can affect matte surfaces particularly. So it's just as well to keep, keep covered up. On with the seats now. Just a simple case of uh, dropping those in onto the rails. Using uh, the rail contactor for this. Uh, having cleaned up just a little bit of the paint off the off the rails to make sure that the bond between the seat and the and the floor is a good one. So just the seat belts tucked in round the side onto the co-driver seat now. You can see the belts actually drape right the way back to the bar that we fitted earlier on. I couldn't really find any references for exactly where they located. Um, so in the end, we they were just fitted to one of the more vertical surfaces on that on that roll bar. Just a bit of clean up. I think we must have got a bit of uh, glue in the way there. But uh, the acrylic stuff's easy to clean off. And now. Uh, it was the fun time of trying to get the roll cage fitted over all that uh, work, especially trying to drape these belts through the various elements of the roll cage. It's quite a complicated cage on, on the Corolla. And it's, uh, it wasn't an easy job to, to get everything in place. There wasn't a lot of room for manoeuvre. So just patient gradual maneuvering of the parts and adjustment of the the shoulder belts through the various bars and so on to get them into the right position so when i mentioned earlier on that the belts do need to be secure very well onto the seats that's the reason why they do have a lot of movement around and you can see the seat just popped away from the from the mounting Eventually the belts are more or less in place. The co-drivers just need a bit of work doing there. Just pop it, pop the belts through into the right place now onto that back bar. And there was some final adjustment later on just to get those exactly where we wanted and uh, secured into place. So that all needs to set up now. We uh, just four points to glue the uh, roll cage onto the floor pan, which uh, is fine to use acrylic for that. So there we go, just four tiny little dabs. And it's a secure enough fit to hold that in place. One or two touch-ups needed after all this uh, moving around, but that was easily uh, done afterwards using the Tommy acrylic paints. So that's the interior assembly done. The dash needs to go on the front of that. We'll see that in her photographs in a moment. And just coming on to the completed assembly, we've got the side panels in there, which were obviously painted separately. The radiator fitted to the front of the car there. The spare wheel with its securing straps fitted into place and the rear dividing uh, window fitted just behind the cage there, which uh, Tommy has supplied the masks, ready-made, ready-cut masks for those. So that was an easy job to, to get those to, uh, to work. So there we are. That's all that work for the interior. Uh, moving on in the next video, the, we're going to go back to the body shell and 
look at decaling them. We've got a bit of a difficulty with the decals for the body shell. The Colorado set that I had for the RAC rally car, um, I've tried one or two of those and they're not going to work. They, they're so old that uh, they're either cracking, they're very stiff and won't conform. I've tried all sorts of softeners with them and uh, there's absolutely no chance of uh, getting them to work so I've got another set on order um, and I'll have to wait for those until uh, we can progress with the decaling. I don't want to mix the Tamiya decals with the potential uh, new colours on on the Colorado set so I'm just going to wait for that to, to arrive, shouldn't be too long before we can progress with uh, the rest of the assembly. So that'll be coming up eventually in part six. Um, there's nothing more to be done really uh, on the rest of the car, on the chassis of the car. Uh, it's a case of pr pr pressing on with the, with the body shell now. Uh, so when that uh, video is ready, we'll get it published straight away. Uh, if you want to pick that one up, then you can subscribe to the channel. We'll uh, obviously, when that video is ready, you'll be notified if you subscribed when that's uh, when that's up and running. So that's it for this one. Hopefully, it won't be too long before we get back and get this uh, get this one wrapped up. Uh, that'll be in part six of this series. So until then, thanks for watching this one. And bye bye for now.